income per year, and for couples, it's gonna be $250,000 per year. Now, among these taxes, there's first the Medicare A, uh, Part A tax, uh, which will increase by 0 0.9 percent, which will, which means that the Medicare Part A tax will now be 2.35 percent, um, which is uh, a, a tantamount number to be taken out of your paycheck. Um, in addition, um, the bill also, as I mentioned, creates a 3.8 percent tax on unearned income. This means your dividends, your interest. So there will be not much of a reason to go and invest your money anywhere. And this is absolutely negative for our economy because our economy right now, it needs more investment. Um, another, uh, well, all these taxes for um, individuals and couples will, will, be, uh, will amount to about $210 billion um, between 2013 and 2019. So that's a lot of money they're taking out of our pockets directly. Um, another thing they mentioned, uh, another thing that I'd I like to also add is that uh, drug manufacturers, um, they're going to be taxed even more. Uh, this means $16 billion between 2011 and 2019. So we will absolutely see a rise in uh, the prices of pharmaceutical drugs. Um, for in health insurance, there's, they're going to be taking um, over uh, $47 billion uh, between 2011 and 2019. Now, health insurance, as we know, the premiums are already a problem for us. And what's the point of tax taking more money from these health insurers because all it's going to do is just increase premiums for those people. Um, in addition, um, the Cadillac tax that uh, ProSide mentioned. Uh, the Cadillac tax, it's going to it's going to take about 40% uh, of the cost of the plan that exceeds the dollar thresholds for um, the more extensive insurance uh, plans. So this just decreases the incentive for better coverage and uh, more comprehensive coverage of the insurers. And this is our rebuttal. Thank you very much. Instead of always focusing on the financial aspects of this health care reform bill, I would like to humbly remind our audiences that the health care reform is because is carried out this way because of three fundamentals. The rise in medical costs and the decline in health care quality in the United States calls for attention. Many people are unable to afford health care during this economy, this given situation that many people are jobless and without health insurance, especially those who have pre-existing conditions because not only do they have illnesses, they are unable to get the coverage that they need to seek treatment for those illnesses. If insurance to the insured is about protection and peace of mind, I say we give them what we, they need right now. How can we expect the cripple to walk if he didn't have a cane and we wouldn't give it to him? Talk about humanity and promoting general welfare in our preamble of the Constitution. It is time to do the right thing for Americans, and the time is now. How is reform beneficial to America? It makes insurance more, insurance more affordable. The creation of exchanges in 2014 would allow people who are unemployed, self-employed, or work for small businesses to shop for affordable coverage. Congressional budget experts estimate that about 25 million people would qualify to shop for health insurance in these exchanges, and 19 million of them would receive some form of financial aid. The cutoff level will be income of four times the poverty level. For one person, that's about 44,000 a year. For a family of four, that would be about 88,000. Subsidies will be based on a sliding scale which means that the higher income you earn, the less subsidies you will get. For people who make three to four times the federal poverty level, they do not have to pay more than about 10% of their income for health insurance. For those who make about 14,000 or 29,000 for a family of four, they would not have to pay more than three to 4% for their health insurance. Also, exchanges will allow competitive rates to set in. Most products offered to individuals and small businesses are much more expensive than comparable products offered by insurance companies to big, com big corporations. That's because big corporations can offer a huge pool of customers, both healthy and less so. The risk is more spread out. 
That is why insurance companies are willing to do so. However, for individuals and small businesses, now the exchanges will allow them to form their own big corporation, and that works for both the insurer and the insured. Insurance rates will decline as a whole because of the risk that is being spread out in the exchange. It is beneficial for both insurer and, ins ins and the insured. So that is a big positive. Also, when we speak about the discrimination, it is taking place within our healthcare system. Health reform will end discrimination against Americans with pre-existing conditions. Kids with health problems cannot be denied coverage, while adults will not be denied coverage uh, uh, during 2014. The mandate of this health care reform bill is expected to bring in tens of millions of new customers for insurance firms, compensation for accepting customers with pre-existing conditions, which can be really expensive. The role of an insurance company, as advertised, is to bring peace of mind to their customers by introducing exchanges that will help bring in millions of customers with well-spread risks. This will benefit both insurers and insured. Furthermore, for those uninsured people who cannot get coverage, there will be a high-risk pool that can accommodate them currently and help them pay for the high premiums. Maximum out-of-pockets are 5950 for individuals and 11900 for families. I would also like to point out the fact that one of my colleagues, William, argued that um, the health care reform bill will lead to devastation of the health industry. Actually, the passage of this new health care reform bill is beneficial to drug and biotech companies because now they will suddenly have tens of millions of customers who can afford the expensive medicines through the health care reform. For every risk we take, we create an opportunity for our Americans. America's future lies in the young people of our generation. Spare thought for the next generation, if not for the future of our nation. Okay, so the opposition raised two interesting questions that we're going to address right now. Uh, the first being whether or not the, t the tax increases will be sustainable for households and businesses. And secondly, whether the increases in government expenditure will actually be detrimental to the economy as a whole. So first of all, to understand the economic impacts of this uh, health care reform bill, we have to look at national savings and what this bill does for national savings. So we refer to this, uh, this graph, right, this equation right here. You can see that national savings is actually Y minus C minus G, where Y is total income or total output, and C is con consumer expenditure, and G is government expenditure. From this equation, we can derive public savings, which is taxes minus government spending. Yes, this bill will increase government spending because now coverage is expanded to um, those in the low income bracket and as well as um, you know, many who can't afford it. But to offset this increase in government expenditure, taxes will increase as well. So for medical manufacturers and for hospitals, for insurance carriers, taxes will go up. But what actually decreases government expenditure is, is um, a reduction in the inefficiencies of the system. Basically, we have really high administrative costs at this point in time. So by reducing that with the new bill, Gov uh, government expenditure will actually decrease. So let's, now let's focus on consumption expenditure. Uh, let's, uh, let's only focus on your marginal propensity to consume based on your income and taxes. Basically, we're going to increase taxes with this bill. So with an increase in taxes, you're not going to want to spend as much money. So your willingness to consume products and to, to buy services, it goes down. So consumption goes down as well. So looking at the equation as a whole, um, national savings will actually increase because of a decrease in consumption expenditure and government expenditure. So what will this do for savings and investment in the economy? So let's refer to this graph. Uh, this graph basically represents savings and investment. Uh, on the x on the y-axis, it's the real interest rate, and on the x-axis, it's the